One of the most dangerous jobs in the world, underwater welding. Underwater welding is one of the most essential, important jobs in the world. When you have to build an oil rig, when you have to run pipes through the seas and waters, when they want to build a structure over water, when there is a repair needed underneath a ship, and you have to do it inside the water, and many many other jobs that has to be done inside the water, they need underwater welders. Welders that work underwater are rarer than you think, because not a lot of them can do this, and a lot of them are not interested. Underwater welding gets more dangerous the more you move away from the shore, and they are considered offshore welders when they get to a certain distance. So it basically means the farther you are from land, the more dangerous your job is. Now we want to see how a day for an underwater welder looks like, and what they go through. Most underwater welders work near shore, and that is why, just like other employees, they get up in the morning and go to work. These welders usually work at dams, different rivers, and in lakes. In the deep end of a dam, there's usually repairs needed all the time, and they have to send underwater welders to take care of it. Another common job for underwater welders is repairing ports, and just like we said, they get up in the morning from their house, go to work for about 8 hours, and go home at night. So it's not as hard as you think, right? But in this video, we're not talking about these types of underwater welders. We want to meet the ones that go offshore underwater welding. The people that weld very far away from land. At this point, the job gets extremely dangerous. The most amount of jobs offshore underwater welders receive is working at oil rigs, and you can find oil rigs in the middle of seas and oceans. These welders live on the oil platform. They go down during the day and then come up at night so they can sleep. And that is why their work shift is not 8 hours anymore, it's more like 14 hours a day. And the main reason is that if you work 8 hours, the job is gonna take extremely long. And when you're working on an oil platform, time is extremely important and they have to knock out their job extremely quickly so they don't have a lot of free time until their job's finished. You might ask, 14 hours a day? So this is why they call it the hardest job in the world. But this might be the easiest, most simple part of the job. Not just anybody could do this job, it takes a lot of guts. Sometimes an offshore welder has to go down 400 meters. Just thinking about that is terrifying. One of the biggest threats underwater welders receive is hypothermia and it could easily kill you. And another danger that threatens underwater welders is that when you're down there for way too long, the water pressure puts pressure on your lungs and the nitrogen that comes along with the oxygen in your lungs get compressed and enter your bloodstream. When you're down there for this long and you receive nitrogen in your blood, they have a special suit that they could release the nitrogen in their blood if it actually builds up. But if they don't release the nitrogen, whenever they come up from the depth of the seas, the nitrogen in your blood turns into bubbles and it could clot and stop the blood from flowing. And this could cause a heart attack or a stroke. Another thing that threatens underwater welders is drowning. You might say they have scuba diving equipment with oxygen. How in the hell do they drown? Have you ever seen a factory that produces heavy machinery? Underwater welding is very similar in that sense. If you make one mistake, something huge will fall on you and kill you. Like for example, they want to move a heavy piece of metal in the water and the pressure differences is huge behind the wall and in front of the wall where the welder is doing its job. When this wall is moved without being careful, the high pressure spot releases pressure towards the welder and that alone could knock out the welder and being knocked out could cause drowning. You might not believe it, but underwater welding could also cause explosions down there. This happens when the welder is not paying attention either. And if it gets extremely hot in the weld spot, that makes oxygen and hydrogen atoms in water molecules to separate. And whenever hydrogen gas is present, there's always a chance of explosion. 
Another thing that threatens underwater welders is electrocution. And this is the number one safety concern for underwater welders. And everything they use basically prevents them from getting shot. Nowadays, there's different technologies that could help underwater welders be safer down there. And they made underwater welding chambers. They basically let the chamber down into the weld spot and it locks itself to the welding site. Whenever it's locked, they release the water and now the welder can go in there and work in the dry. These chambers are mostly used for oil rigs and by using this equipment, the welder is a lot safer than before. You might ask if they're welding indoors, all the fumes that comes off welding is gonna suffocate them in that small room. But these chambers are actually more advanced than you think. There's three different tanks that go along with this chamber. One of them has helium, one has oxygen, and one is storage for the fumes that's released from the welding. And it's always circulating air inside there so the welder doesn't have trouble breathing. You might think that these extremely expensive welding chambers save the lives of many welders. But unfortunately, these chambers have not solved any problem. First of all, they're very new. And second of all, it can't be used in every application. And it's actually very rare that these chambers are used in a certain spot. If you're familiar with the equipment used for underwater welding, you know how different it is from the ones in the onshore rather than offshore welding. And another interesting fact is that underwater welding is only done with electrodes or stick welding. But the electrode is very different than the one used on land. Another important thing that needs to be present is a certain gas to be in the tip of the electrode. The gas basically allows a dry spot in the weld section and it allows the weld to dry rather than get washed off by the water. So an underwater welder has to be very brave and not afraid, be very athletic so they can swim around easily. And most importantly, they have to be an experienced welder that knows what they're doing. People have not been successful in building robots to replace underwater welders. And with these robots, many lives could be saved. But unfortunately, we haven't reached this type of tech. Not only do underwater welders that work offshore have one of the hardest jobs in the world, but their job is extremely important and essential. Like the gas you use, usually the crude oil comes from oil rigs. And not only do the underwater welders help build this thing, but they also help maintain it. So you play with your life this much, how much money do you make? The salary of underwater welders differentiates in certain parts of the world and the information available is only for Europe and American welders. For the Europeans, it starts around 53,000 euros per year. And if you're an experienced welder, you get around 100,000 euros per year. And in the US, an experienced underwater welder could be paid as much as $150,000 per year.